Okay, class and guests, welcome. Uh, Asli is going to be our last guest speaker of the semester. Okay, class and... And that's in the background. Okay, so uh, we've had four guest speakers this semester, starting with Ali, then Bahadur, then Eran. And today I'm very happy to have uh, a woman entrepreneur with us as well. Uh, again, Asli is our graduate. And it's also interesting because uh, two of our guests had been the kind that directly went into entrepreneurship, uh, even before they graduated. Whereas Ali, as you remember, had had a career before entrepreneurship, had worked at Procter & Gamble in a few countries. And Asla's career was also similar in that she uh, also had a life before entrepreneurship. So uh, I, I think it's going to be a very interesting presentation and also the fact that she uh, works with you know the, the, the farms and with farming, uh, something that we need but we tend to forget about. Uh, so I look forward to this great entrepreneurship guest speech uh, from Aslaksoy. Today we're going to do things a little differently. The first part of our uh, guest speech will be a presentation by Asla. But because it was prepared in Turkish and she doesn't have a lot of chance to practice her English on, fa on the farm, so we decided that we were going to do this initial uh, elevator pitch, kind of a long elevator pitch uh, in Turkish, and then we will switch back to English, and then uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Okay, so uh, Aslı, welcome to BA4137. Uh, when you were a student, I wasn't teaching entrepreneurship, so I'm pretty sure you didn't take this class, at least from me. Uh, yeah. You might you might have actually taken maybe accounting from me. Accounting, financial accounting. In my previous career, I guess. Okay, so uh, the floor is yours. Uh, would you like to tell us about Elif Belinde Tarım? Okay, thank you very much, Adam. Uh, and my dear friend, uh, Again, hello to everybody, and I'm so excited and so proud, of, so happy to be together with you here today. Uh, I wish we were, uh, you know, come together on face-to-face -to -face basis in one of our auditoriums, uh, but of course, uh, because of this pandemic uh, times, uh, it's okay to uh, again come together with you like this. So uh, now I have a small presentation, a pitch deck, a very small presentation from me. Uh, as Adil Hocam said, uh, I get prepared it uh, in Turkey, so uh, thank you for your understanding, first of all, uh, for my first broken English and then my presentation in Turkish. And then after the presentation, we'll come together with your questions. We will be back. Now I'm uh, smoothly sharing my presentation. Okay, now starting. Tekrar merhabalar arkadaşlar. İsmim Aslı Aksoy. Ee, kurucusu olduğum eli belinde markamdan kırsaldaki kadın emeğini küresel değer zincirine entegre eden yerli kuşkolmaz üretiyor ve ürettiriyoruz. Ee, problem şu ki ülkemizde kuşkolmaz üretimi aslında kuşkolmaz çok fazla yaygınlaşmadı ve bu a, bir takım problemlere sebep oluyor. Bunlardan ilki her ay en az her yıl özür dilerim en az 200 ton ithal kuşkolmaz bir ve Meksika'dan ülkemize ulaşmakta. Kuşkolmazın en büyük tüketim pazarı olan Avrupa ihracatta ise potansiyel gelir kaybı yaşamaktayız. Tüketim seviyesinde ise gıda seçimlerinin sağlık üzerine etkileri, tetiklediği çevresel ve sosyal sonuçlar giderek ve giderek daha fazla önemli olmakta. Bu nedenle biz üretimi ölçeklenmiş ve sertifikalı, erkenci hasat, tarla tazeliğinde kuşkolmazımızla ülkemizde yeni bir pazar yaratıyoruz ve bunu sürdürülebilir tarımla yapıyoruz. Tarlamızda dijital tarım çözümleri uyguluyor, akıllı tarımla akıllı kuşkolmaz üretiyoruz. Üretimde robotik çözümler için prototip geliştiriyor, paketlemede makine entegrasyonu ile ürün kalitemizi ve verimliliğimizi arttırıyoruz. Böylelikle pahalı ve tazeliğini kaybetmiş, ithal kuşkolmazın ülkemizdeki kullanıcısı zincir ve şef restoranların yüksek maliyet ve yüksek karbon ayak iziyle kuşkolmazı okyanus aşırı ülkelerden ithal eden Yurt dışı marketlerin problemini çözüyoruz. Aynı zamanda organik gıdanın ülkemizdeki öncü tüketicilerine beslenmede çeşitlilik ve yeni lezzet deneyimleri sunuyoruz. Eli Belinde'nin yurt dışı pazarda doğrudan en büyük rakibi nomad tarımdır ve onunla ortaklaşa rekabet eder. 
Diğerleri ise 20 dönüm altında faaliyet gösteren lokal üreticilerdir. Biz pazara en erkenci kuşkonmazı, tek organik sertifikalı üretim ve yüksek tüketici güveniyle sunarak bir değer yaratıyoruz. Ve bu değer için müşterimiz bize piyasa ortalamasının %26 fazlasını ödemeyi kabul ediyor. Bizde iki yasa tarısı 9 ay. Ee, geçen zaman ve pandemiye rağmen müşterimiz bizden vazgeçmedi ve geçen sezon %84'ü müşterilerimizin bizden tekrardan satın alma yaptı. Yurt dışı pazarda ise bizimle aynı dönemde üretim yapan İspanya'ya karşı belirgin şekilde fiyat avantajımız işçilikler gereği. Ee, 12 ay üretim yapan Perio karşı ise hedef pazarlara yakınlık üstünlüğümüz vardır. Ee, genel bir takım veriler kuşkolmaz üretiminde 2 yıl tarla tesisi sürmekte ki bunlar yok yıllarıdır. Hasat kademeli olarak başlar, 3. yıl tam verim olunur ve 10 yıl boyunca birimli bir şekilde hasat devam eder. Ee, bu çerçevede baktığımızda biz 2014 yılında 2,5 dönüm alanda pilot üretimle işe başladık. 2015 yılında ticari büyüklükte ihtarlığımızı kurduk. 2017 yılında eli belinde markamızla ilk ürünlerimizi piyasaya çıkardık ve müşteri doğrulamamızı yaptıktan sonra adım adım büyümeye başladık. Bugün itibariyle 250 dönüm alanda faaliyet göstermekteyiz. 2023'e geldiğimiz ise artan üretim kapasitemizle paralel üretim e, kapasitemizi de paketleme kapasitemizi de arttıracak. Donuk, konserve, turşu gibi kuşkolmazın işlenmiş ürünlerini de ürün aktarmaya başlayacağız. Ve 1250 dönüm için daha sözleşmeli üretimin büyümesine basacağız. E, rakamsal boyutuyla baktığımızda 12 yıllık üretim döngüsü içerisinde projemiz minimum %50 karlılıkla çalışmakta ve 5 kat yatırım dönüşü sağlamaktadır. Tüm tarlalarımızın e, hasata geldiği 4. yılda projemiz başa başa gelmekte. Tüm tarlalar tam birime oturduğunda ise ciroda 11 kat, hacimde 13 kat büyüme sağlamış olacağız. 2025 yılında 350 tonu ulaşan üretim kapasitemiz olacak ve Bundan sonra yolculuğumuza sözleşme üretimi gücüyle devam edip ölçeklenmeye devam edeceğiz. Avokadonun ülkemizdeki gelişimi hepinizce malum. Kuşkolmaz'ın da paralel bir eğilimle 5 yıl içerisinde yıllık %30 büyüme trendi ile bugün 200 ton olan tüketiminin 750 ton seviyesine ulaşacağını öngörüyoruz. 2025'e geldiğimizde biz yurt içi pazardan bu pazardan %23 pay almayı hedefliyoruz. Yurt dışında ise ülkelerin tüketim, üretim, İthalet ihracat dış verilerini detaylı incelediğimizde 3 tane ülke hedef pazar olarak karşımıza çıkıyor. Bunlar Almanya, İngiltere ve İsviçre. Rekabet üstünlüğü sağladığımız ülkelerin bu hedef pazarlar yaptığı ihracatını sadece %10'la hedeflersek ilk etapta ulaşılabilir 1800 tonluk bir pazar büyüklüğü söz konusu. Ve biz 5 yıl içerisinde bu pazarın da %10'unu hedefliyoruz. E, Kuşkolmaz ülkemize benimsetmek için yoğun iletişim ve tanıtım faaliyetlerimiz var ve biz bunları e, sahada e, agroturizmle bu yönde yaptığımız çalışmalarla destekliyoruz. YouTube'de ise Aylin Yazıcıoğlu, Mehmet Gürs gibi ünlü şefler, Big Chefs Dream Group gibi öncü restoranlarla iş birliklerini hayata geçiriyoruz. İradatta ise bugünden Little Market gibi Avrupa'nın ünlü zincirlerine palet bazlı küçük sevkiyatlara başladık ve yine bugünden Sözleşme üretici adaylarına erişim ve detaylı bilgilendirme çalışmaları yapıyoruz. Ve takım, ben otlu işletme mezunuyum. 13 yıllık kurumsal hayat tecrübemi ve kuşkolmazı olan tutkumu bu işe akıtıyorum. Ortam avukat Burak Türker, biz hızla büyürken ilişkilerimizi hukuksal boyutuyla takip ediyor. Sahada Muğla'da Damla, sağ kolum. Antalya'da Ahmet, o da sol kolum. Arkamızda 5 yıldır birlikte çalıştığımız evlerinde kadınların gücü var. Ve sahada tam desteğini aldığımız mamatlarımız rahat mühendisleri var. Ve bizim en büyük gücümüz de e, gerçekten mutlu müşterilerimizden gelmekte. Teşekkür ediyorum. Evet. Sunumdan çıkıyorum. Ve tekrardan buradayım. Okay. So this time I'm uh, switching back to English. And uh, a, a little note for our foreign students, uh, as you will be preparing a short summary of today's uh, guest speech as well, uh, you might not have been able to understand all of the presentation. However, to be able to fit it into that slot, we wanted to do it in English. So you will have more than enough material to fill out your uh, summary. So uh, don't worry. So, uh, Asla. 
uh, one of the things that I like to get out of this, uh, these guest speakers is uh, our typical student isn't an entrepreneur or graduate, though we do have some which uh, go into this area. So I want to know what's different about you or what's not different about you. Because when the students don't see entrepreneurs, they tend to not think of it as a potential career alternative. So could you t tell us a little bit about yourself, your family, your uh, early education, and then uh, we'll get to the university as well? Okay, okay. Uh, Adrizam, uh, in fact, it's the same. It was the same uh, with me because uh, when I was a student, uh, I was not also thinking about being an, an entrepreneur, actually. Um, well, coming back to my childhood, it was a very happy childhood. I was born in Izmir and my father is from Mula. So I, I, I call myself uh, an Egyptian girl. Uh, I'm Egeliim. <laughs> I'm from Egypt. So uh, I think that, that that that was the first, you know, uh, little things that affects our lives. Because uh, in our family, we had a small summer house, uh, actually my grandma's house. And in summertime, we all the family, we came together there. And uh, there was a small farm in front of the house, just a one day car or something, very small. And uh, we were planting what uh, we eat during the summertime and make some preparations for the upcoming year, I mean, the, the winter time. So it's just like some vegetables and for the preparations like uh, canned foods or dried meat. Uh, and that was what I was feeling those days were, uh, I love touching the soil. Okay, that's in my pocket, but it was not enough <laughs> to, be a, uh, to give an entrepreneur uh, decision uh, in the upcoming future but I was deeply in love with that uh, not only with uh, touching the soil but also you know the um, the social uh, gatherings of all the family all the exchanges between um, these people uh, the know-how they're uh, transferring to each generations to each other so these were you know I was very very um, uh, uh, I was very happy those days. I remember those days. So uh, after that, um, the education started, of course. And uh, fortunately, I was a very, you know, successful student <laughs> um, during the um, high school times and uh, starting from primary school, actually. Uh, and that was not because of I was so smart, no. Uh, but I was very good at. I was a hardworking girl, very responsible. Uh, and I said that okay, uh, I was um, uh, I was in um, a high school, the Anatolian type, the Anatolian high school, and I said that I want to go to Otu, Metu, because that's a dream uh, school, dream university for myself. Yeah, and during the high school time, we made a, a visit to the school, and I deeply uh, involved. I was deeply involved with the you know um, everywhere, the faculty and uh, everything related with Otu. So. I just set a target those days, I remember, uh, but I didn't actually uh, make so much discussions in my mind. No, I didn't do that. I, I just would like to go to university and this is Otto, so I have to work uh, hardly on my lessons and whatever related with that process. And I did it. Uh, and with a, you know, a Turkish um, a degree in the examination, actually, I was in the BA class uh, in uh, Otto afterwards. Uh, and after graduation, uh, also, I was graduated with an honor degree, whatever. Uh, like every fresh graduate from our school, uh, we were uh, dreaming about uh, going to a corporate uh, company. Like, um, you know, we'll start with some uh, executive levels and then gradually, uh, step by step, we'll go further. Uh, hopefully, we'll be a CEO, maybe a CFO. Uh, and that's that that's that's the target. But I now realize that it's uh, you know it's an external, uh, not internal, something external um, targeting coding, something like that. Sorry for my broken English. Okay, uh, it <laughs> it was like that. But Actually, then let, let let me comment on your English. It's not that at all. Okay, oh. so, so uh, <laughs> don't worry about it. It sounds quite nice. And. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, yes, we, we need some examples, some understanding of how 
uh, for example, you graduated with uh, an, a nice degree, very close to high honor, I noticed. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then uh, did you apply to, you know, just a couple of uh, jobs or did you apply to five, ten? How was it? Uh, it was the graduation ceremony in the weekend and on Monday, it was Saturday, and on Monday I started to work in Philip Morris. <laughs> I, I applied for it weeks, weeks ago and it was a very simple job actually. It was temporary helper, something like that. Instead of a, a permanent person, you go there and work for a while to support the, the, the processes. But I was planning, of course, I'll just enter in the company. It's an international corporate company. Uh, it's a good starting point. And then, okay, this temporal help is a situation. And then uh, I'll become permanent one. And then um, enter whatever it is. It doesn't matter. It does not matter those days. Even if it's HR, even if it's, uh, you know, uh, financing department or something related, marketing. Because... Uh, after then, I realized that I, I have some uh, more um, ability to, to, to realize uh, issues related with brand management, uh, related with marketing. After then, but at those days, it, it doesn't matter for me, okay, in, in position, but the company was important, a good starting point, uh, because I was, we, were all, uh, we were all dreaming about a corporate life with the high heels in women's case. Uh, nice sweet uh, that was like that those days but now i realize that uh, i'm very very very much more happy happier in my plastic boots with all the uh, soil and the mud on <laughs> but this is me of course not everybody has to be like that uh, anyway let's go back to those days uh, i started in a company and then and then i realized that okay it's not um, okay for me uh, it's a huge company. It will take too much time for me to, uh, uh, to climb the ladders. So let's go for another job opportunity. Uh, and I changed job, I guess, two or three times those days, eight months there, one year there, half year there. It was the two years time that took me uh, to make the right decision uh, because um, I started to work for a textile company and uh, it lasts it lasted for three years first, and then another textile company, five years more. Uh, I started to get experience. Where in Turkey were, were these things? Did you go to Istanbul or did you go back to Ege? I started in uh, Izmir. Uh, I always wanted to stay in Izmir, but it was impossible. If you are talking about a corporate life, uh, sooner or later, life throws you to Istanbul. <laughs> Exactly, which I really didn't want at the beginning. Uh, I remember my first day in Istanbul uh, in the new company. It was a transfer with good money and good salary and incentives, whatever it is. I was so, you know, excited for that. But uh, in the same day, in the afternoon, I said to myself, I decided on that day, I have to go back as soon as possible to my hometown. I, I have to find something, a way to go back. Okay, it then took nine years to go back, but I decided at that day. <laughs> so uh, textile, uh, in business, in textile business, I started as an assistant and then um, executive and then manager. Uh, and the last time uh, I was the marketing manager uh, of, of one of the uh, textile companies based in Istanbul, but mostly works with France and Russia and Poland. I was traveling a lot. That was nice. But, you know, we jump, uh, I was in fashion shows, for instance, with the models and other things. Yeah, I can now imagine that uh, compared with my ambitions and by my personality. That was not the right thing for me. Uh, I was regretting. I was missing the other things. I I I, I was always, you know, uh, searching for ways to escape to again Izmir or Mula for that specific weekends together. Okay, this is the tomato time. I have to go and uh, join <laughs> to my family uh, to launch the new uh, garden for the upcoming season. I remember this. So I was back from uh, Paris. And then take the first plane 
to go to Dalaman and then to uh, my grandma's house. So there was something wrong, uh, as you can imagine, <laughs> as you can understand. Uh, later on, later on, uh, these um, ambitions, uh, this becomes to evolve in dreams, dreaming, dreaming all the day. Uh, I think dreaming is the most important thing to start with. If you are planning to launch your own job or own startup, dreaming, okay, I love this, this is good, but to be a job, uh, it should be sustainable and uh, it should be something economic wise, clever and uh, related with my uh, my my my uh, uh, background. And, what, yeah. What, what, what did your parents do? What? Uh, the huh. They were always supporting me. I was so uh, so so uh, lucky for that. Uh, all my decisions when I decide to change my job, change my career, they said, "Okay, huh? This is a very important cracking point. Uh, I have to." Uh, highlight uh, when I understand understood that there is this um, um, something wrong issue uh, I first decided to change my professional career if I was dreaming about uh, to produce something on my own in the future and market this unique whatever it is I didn't know those days uh, I have to first experience uh, get knowledge about the market, about the consumer trends, whatever it is. And it's the uh, easiest way uh, and the low cost way uh, is to go there and to work for a company who does this job. So I changed the careers of the textile business after eight years experience in that. Uh, and I, um, I, I started to work for a company. Uh, it's a food company. It was a food company. Uh, who was trying to um, trying to get all the uh, organic and Anatolian taste products uh, and trying to market them first in Turkey and also to uh, basically to uh, America. So uh, that was a very right starting point. That could be very right starting point for me. So I changed my career and started to work for that company as a marketing manager. Uh, so that I start to learn about uh, all the, uh, you know, the production types, uh, different kinds of products, how they are produced, where I can reach, where I can find them, uh, also the uh, upcoming new uh, consumption trends uh, in the food sector. So that was a great chance for me to understand, like a second school, uh, getting prepared to me uh, for my second life, for my entrepreneurship life. The, the nice thing of doing that is that in, in agriculture, oftentimes there will be times when you make mistakes. Well, in entrepreneurship, all types of entrepreneurship, the nice thing about working for somebody else is you make mistakes with their money. So exactly. rather than having to pay out of your own pocket, uh, we have a question from Bousset. Uh, so did you always know about the agricultural side? Definitely not. <laughs> so what I did for that, uh, still working for this uh, company, uh, I first um, meet with Aspergus uh, in this business uh, and Aspergus became answer to all of my questions actually. Uh, why Aspergus? Maybe we can talk after. But when I met with Aspergus during this job, okay, I said, this, this, this may be the um, idea I was searching for. And then I started to search. It's the training, uh, new training uh, part of my life. Uh, it was on the job training and also it's a literature um, training on, on web uh, during the weekends, during all my uh, uh, yearly, uh, yearly um, vacations. I always spent my time, uh, even on the computer, searching for asparagus, uh, basically in uh, foreign uh, literature, because there is no uh, know-how, there is no that much literature in Turkish, uh, because there's few people who produce asparagus in Turkey. But also, physically, uh, I met with the biggest producer of asparagus in Turkey, the company, 
and I really begged for them, okay, take me, take me, and I can work for free in your farm. <laughs> this is a real story. Uh, I can come uh, 10 days when there is the you know, yearly um, vacation time, uh, or I can come in the uh, religious holidays. They are huge times. So I worked there, started to learn uh, by working with them. And also, uh, during the time, strategic corporations are very important. Basically, uh, for a, a product which is a very new one in a country, a uh, corporation, not competition. Competition is okay, but cooperative competition is very valuable. So we became hand in hand with that company and in, in the future as well. And um, I get all the, you know, uh, know-how, the uh, agricultural engineering know-how from them. And I share my marketing background uh, to promote a new product in a new market. So we come together to make a strategic um, uh, combination so that I get uh, also, I feed myself with the engineering stuff, but uh, it's an ongoing process, a lifetime learning process. It never ends. I still go to symposiums. I still go to um, um, universities abroad for just Asparagus uh, seminars. So I still try to feed myself, uh, but the best um, feeding is coming from the company I cooperate with. Uh, so on a gain and gain basis, uh, we really good, we, we really, I think, realize a good job uh, working together. If it's the answer, a good answer. <laughs> yes, and you mentioned something very interesting. I had to go and comment it on my own. So uh, yes, you're a competitor with, uh, in a sense, this other company, uh, what was their name? Nomad Tarim. Nomad Tarim. But that, that's, I think, one of the big risks in your business is that this is, uh, well, even though we've had, I guess, asparagus, kushkon in Turkey for quite some time and wild varieties of it, but right now it's not very well known. It's not consumed very much in large parts of Turkey. And in general, what I tell uh, startups that I mentor is that you don't have enough time or money to educate your customers. So in your case, uh, do you see that you will, you have been able to educate them? Uh, is the demand up and coming? Yes, Adlojan. Um, as long as we produce, the market is getting bigger. Um, I think this is because of asparagus. We didn't talk about the features of asparagus. Um, I don't know if our friends are also familiar with it, uh, even though they tried uh, before or not, I don't know. Uh, but asparagus is, uh, in the presentation, I um, shortly passed, actually. It's, it's like avocado. Uh, avocado, 20 years ago, nobody knew in our country. In, and, uh, in 10 years, the pioneer producers uh, started to produce little by little in the uh, country and for the last decade now it's very popular uh, and I believe that avocado is uh, something more difficult than compared to asparagus Aspar because asparagus <laughs> asparagus is a wild as you said uh, species uh, actually coming from our soils so we are more get used to the taste of it we can also cook asparagus in many ways, not like avocado. You can just spread or eat in the breakfast or whatever, but you can uh, eat asparagus starting from the morning with the breakfast, uh, making uh, it soup and continue with its salad and then combine it with your um, fish or uh, meat at the dinner. So, and it's very, very, very healthful, like a superfood. Uh, because it's full of fibers, it's uh, antioxidant, it's anti-aging, uh, minerals and vitamin rich, uh, folic acid uh, source. So uh, it's amazing and very delicious. Very, it has a gastronomic value, by the way. All the chefs, uh, the A plus restaurants are looking for that, and uh, you know, really, uh, they are paying poof, in enormous prices for getting just a one pound of. Uh, asparagus in their uh, in their menu and just, they just put 
one or two spheres on the plate. So uh, there's a great potential for that. So, um, and people are, yes, learning and very you know, curious about that. During this pandemic uh, um, time, uh, everybody, well, it was a very hard time for many of the companies, but it was a little bit good for us because people were at home and they wanted to try and make their family eat something very healthy, something very different, and something very delicious. And Asperger's was a very good um, answer for their need. So it's a, a great potential, I guess, in our country. And we are trying to highlight these properties while uh, realizing our marketing uh, activities. The, the pricing of asparagus right now in Turkey, it's a luxury item, right? In, in pricing. Mm -hmm. uh, how is it like, how, how does the price compare to, for example, Germany and Europe? Uh, here in Turkey, actually, uh, it is highly priced when uh, at the very beginning of the season and at the end of the season. Because, um, as I said in the presentation, uh, first of all, it takes three years to launch an upgrade field. It's an investment, not, not like the other vegetables. It's the only one. It's a vegetable growth up like a fruit, a fruit farm. Uh, because you invest, you wait, uh, and we use enormous land, uh, land, just for one time harvesting per year. And it takes only three months. Uh, to sum up, I would say that asparagus prices will never be uh, like the other vegetables. Not like, ne never it can be like a broccoli, never it can be like a, another vegetable. Always high in price because the production of it is costly. And also labor intense work. It's a very labor intense work on the field. But in Turkey, when you see very high prices, it's the, as I said, very beginning and very end. So the economy, um, when you uh, there is less product, the price is high. But <laughs> demand and supply, right? Supply and demand. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but during the high season, which lasts two months or something like that, local fresh asparagus is really uh, uh, really attainable, reachable. Very reachable, yes. Uh, and also, people always remember the price of the export, exported asparagus out of the season. Now, if you go there, everybody says, oh, it's very costly now. It's just a bunch of it is 35, uh, 300 grams and it's 35 Turkish liras per bunch. Yes, because it's coming from Mexico. It's a high way it's coming. Uh, the transportation costs, I don't count about the high footprint, carbon uh, footprint. Uh, it's not healthy, it's not uh, fresh, and it's very costly. It's the exported one. Don't, please, don't uh, mix them <laughs> during the high season. Local fresh asparagus is highly reachable, very delicious, and very healthy. And if it's not fresh, I guess it, it becomes chewy and, you know. Very it, bad. Uh, here, here's, here's some information from Cyprus. Hmm. Yes, I read it. Mm -hmm. But nobody selling it there or nobody producing. <laughs> uh, some time ago, I knew that uh, some asparagus farming in Kubris was popular, but they quit somehow. But I think this is because farming in general is not easy in Cyprus uh, because of the water uh, and because of the uh, transportation logistics issue. Uh, I think this limited is the way market. some kind of that. Limited market also. Yeah, limited market. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh. But yes, I really deserve, and they do have festivals for I, I really, as far as you remember. <laughs> okay, well, here are a few other questions. Maybe we can sl slip those into uh, the, the trend. Uh, your family was supporting you, but you know, how did you take that first step? Mm -hmm. What gave you the courage? Well, from your side, it looks like a bit uh, riskful actions. Uh, a business that you don't, I don't have any, any experience, and it's an 
open farming production type, uh, open to many risks of uh, climate and uh, spot weather changes, whatever. Uh, yes, it's full of risks, but I didn't take a very riskful step, I guess, because when I was um, working as a professional in the company, I didn't quit my job for my first farm. I made just a very small uh, demo, uh, I can say, pilot uh, field with one of my relatives. Uh, he's a farmer from my village in Mula. Uh, and I said, hey, Hasan Abi, please, let's do that job. I'll bring all the know-how, literature and the crowns to you uh, and tell you how it will be done on a book uh, information. You know the soil, you know everything, you know the climate, uh, everything. So let's come together and do this job together and let's see whether it works or not. And it was also a trial uh, process for me because until that time it was a romantic uh, maybe um, ambition of mine. Uh, but professionally, uh, if I start to think about investing in this business, I had to be sure for that. So we started with a very small area, two and a half decar, iki buçuk dönüm. It's a very small one. Uh, you, you, you, you made me spend a lot of time figuring out the measurements uh, because <laughs> it, it, it says dönüm. So I'm trying to figure out how many hectares <laughs> or decars or whatever the equivalent is. And I, uh, on the in the tweets, I did put some information, but it might be totally wrong. Like <laughs> I, I say, you began with less than one. Uh, I need to look at the tweet. Less than one hectare, I think, or decar. <laughs> and then now you're up to sixty decar, because I think dunum is one quarter approximately of a hectare. No, no. no? <laughs> Okay, let's make it clear. Uh, one decar equals one dunum. Then I'm using this uh, metrics. But uh, in the other parts of Turkey, when you go, when you say one dunum, they understand it's uh, two and a half decar. It's a bit complicated issue. That's why it's better to call it universal metrics decar hectare. <laughs> <laughs> so the first pilot uh, farm was just only two and a half decar. Okay. Yani uh, 2,500 square meters. <laughs> okay. Uh, mm -hmm. here, here's a question about the, the investment because initially to start out, you have to spend a certain amount of time getting prepared. You said about at least two years. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Busa again is asking about, did you use any government resources from EU or from Turkey? No, no. All my own uh, financial resources. Jep. Uh, Jep. Jep then, uh, And supported with uh, credit loans. Uh, once I made a mistake when I was getting, uh, when I was expanding my investments, very, at the very early stage, uh, I, I, I um, called for some partners in the company uh, to raise money for the investments. But that was a big, big in, um, uh, hold of mine. Uh, then I had the first situation bank pay more than a bank loan. If I went to a bank uh, to get this loan, I would pay less uh, to raise that capital. But no, I, I take that money after all and then pay back to the partners, get back my shares. So um, it's a very uh, long and bad story of mine. Maybe we can talk after <laughs> deeply. Uh, maybe in Turkish it's better. <laughs> uh, but yes, mostly from my pocket and supported by uh, bank credits, I launched this business. But step by step. That's why it was not very risky. Uh, two and a half decar became 20 decar plus 20 decar more. It made 40 decar. After then, 140 plus. After then, 70 plus. Now it's 250 decars. So always it's gradually. Ah, we can't hear you. Hoca. So this was my calculation. So uh, typically because I had always heard of acres. 
Yeah, so acre. Yeah. So I the, think the, a donum is a quarter of an acre. About. Oh yes, yes, one acre. Yes, you're right. Uh -huh. Okay, so I guess mathematics, I get a passing grade. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a question about technology usage. In your presentation, you had robotics and some other things. So maybe this will be an entry into that subject. Mm -hmm. uh, for sustainable farming, this is the issue of today, which is very, very important. Farming is okay, it's important, it's valuable, but uh, actually the form of sustainability is the most important question to be addressed in all production processes. Uh, because we face scarcity of soil, scarcity of water sources, uh, we have to use them in a uh, smart way to make them uh, to make them uh, sustainable for the upcoming generations as well. We are not the only one using this soil. So, and also these solutions increases the efficiency, increases the yields, uh, decreases the uh, unexpected effects of weather uh, affairs. Uh, like what I'll explain. Now we use um, digital farming, digital solutions uh, in the field. This means we have uh, location-based sensors in the soil uh, measuring uh, and reporting the humidity of the soil, uh, the sijak mm, look, mm, the the, <laughs> the the temperatures, uh, humidity, temperatures from different levels of the soil so that uh, we can decide on a precise time, precisely, when to irrigate, uh, how much to irrigate. Uh, so this is very, very important to manage the yield of the farm. Also, there are some, um, some uh, uh, traps for the uh, pesticides, and there is a camera system taking photos, uh, photos time by time uh, of these pesticides and warns you when the population is high, okay, Asli, go and find the solution for these pesticides on the field. So uh, you, you can control the, you know, the yield of the farm and uh, doing the right things in the right time. Is so, it for the pesticide or the pests themselves? Pests themselves. Pests, pests okay. Themselves. Sorry. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay. So I, I was wondering how how you uh, catch the pesticide. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, here's a kind of business question uh, from Ali Refai. Mm -hmm. So asking about your st marketing strategy. B to C is around 15 percent of your sales. What would be your marketing strategy to educate your customers? Let them try aspergs and increase this person in the upcoming year. Okay. Do, do, you, give, do you give samples? <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> tasting is the most important uh, uh, marketing activity in our case because we play to the, you know, um, to the. Yeah. <laughs> well, first of all, let me have correction in the question uh, because 15% target is for. 225. Now B2C sales is at around 35-40%. Our sales are going to B2C customers. Basically, it's e-commerce um, sales. Uh, but in by 2025, our production will be uh, very, very high when compared to the uh, present situation. Uh, and we know that uh, although the consumption, although the e-commerce is getting bigger and bigger each year, uh, when compared to the uh, increase in the production levels, it won't stay in this level, 35-40%. It will become as a percentage in the whole production and sales lower, uh, but B2C and exports will get bigger in the percentage. Uh, and what I do to keep this, uh, um, to, to make more customers try asparagus is that the best thing is that uh, word of mouth is very important. And every, every happy customer uh, and what you do to make them happy 
Uh, it can be packaging, it can be uh, fast serving, it can be solving problems after sales, whatever. It can be very sincere relationship than getting their, uh, you know, um, order and sending back and uh, answering their questions on a timely manner, whatever it is. The best investment is, is to make your customers happy. When one, really, it was a, uh, Adil Hocam, it was one of the uh, topics in our lessons. I remember one happy customer equals that much new potential customer or vice versa, bad customers are uh, bringing much more uh, bad customers. Uh, we, we mentioned when you have an unhappy customer, they will complain a lot. And huh. in my fundamentals class, I usually give the example of my Volkswagen Polo TDI, which ah. was a horrible car. Uh, <laughs> and I've probably lost a lot of customers to Volkswagen over the years. Uh, but but you're, you're right, you know, customer acquisition costs. So you can yeah. advertise, you can do this, you can do that. But the customer acquisition costs of different channels are very different. And the best way to get them is if you have an existing customer that you've sold to, selling to them is usually half or a third of the cost of finding a new brand, a brand new customer. Exactly. So keeping, I, yeah. keeping customers happy makes a huge difference. And also, if they're delighted, they love it, then yeah, word of mouth, they tell their friends, etc. When they're unhappy, they also tell people. So uh, that that that's the main path that you're following, I guess. So happy customers, which tell their friends and buy again and again. This is the main force, uh, really. I'm very honest speaking. But besides that, of course, what we are doing is the, uh, the promotion activities, also the communication activities. Um, for example, I do some things more differently. Uh, I go to, uh, for example, not to the chefs, but the chef candidates uh, in the universities, in the um, uh, shame, uh, academies, you know, for instance, like that. Uh, I go there because they are the upcoming chefs. If they know us for good and how to use it, uh, when they are working for a restaurant or they open their own restaurants, they will be looking for asparagus. And in our strategy, um, not uh, promoting Eli Belinde uh, asparagus, not Eli Belinde only. Sometimes I just give my effort to promote asparagus itself because it's the very beginning of a launching of a new sector uh, and it's important that people know asparagus if they know asparagus and if they see behind me they'll uh, automatically will know that if we are talking about asparagus this should be asles asparagus so that's not important it's Belinda or Aslus at that moment the critical thing is that this is asparagus this is how you eat it this is how you keep it in your house safely this is how you can um use it in the kitchen boiling frying in barbecue whatever it is so social media makes a big difference for uh, for this, um, and um, the, the uh, famous. Do you work chef... with influencers? Have you been able to get them to share? They're expensive, <laughs> as far as I know. No, no. I would have done it. To be honest, until now, I did spend zero money for uh, such kind of things, including uh, advertisements as well. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm still not uh, very, you know, um, certain that if I'm doing it right or wrong. But this is this is my feeling that I'm doing it right because I see the good um, feedback uh, of what I'm doing. So I don't spend advertising to the influencers, whatever. But uh, the uh, volunteers are coming and just asking. Sometimes not asking, buying asparagus from me and speaking in my words okay this is great because this is uh, excellent because i put it in the kitchen like this and served like that and this is last list amazing so again come to the same point when you make them happy uh, sometimes you meet with the influencers very very influential in the market and they happen to become uh, more popular i guess <laughs> 
uh, Devran asks, are you going to get into other things? But I guess you want to first fulfill the, the capacity in Kushkon Mas first. Exactly, Adlerza. Mm -hmm. Exactly. First, let's fulfill this capacity. <laughs> uh, There's a long way to go, by the way. Okay, and Buse again had a question. H how do you get the feedback from your customers? Uh, they directly reach uh, to me, first of all. Uh, they share pictures of the asparagus plates from their table, dinner table, directly with WhatsApp uh, or uh, on social media sending to me. Also, I love coming to them, uh, coming together with them uh, on the market. Uh, my mother used to say that, Asla, if you don't want to study hard, sometimes because I was in depression from time to time, and uh, saying that, okay, I don't want to study anymore. It, it lasts for a week, something like that. But every year it happens to me. Uh, she was saying that, okay, I'll go to the market and sell lemons. Then, lemons then. Uh, when I'm a child. <laughs> and now I go to the market and I sell asparagus, and I'm so happy for that because these are the great um, stages when you come to the uh, customers together to chat. And these are very good organic bazaars. These are mm, that those transactions are based on communication there. Uh, so you um, not consume actually. It's um uh, I don't know how can I say to let make together. How can I say it, Adil Oja? So not co co-production kind of something like that. Together you do it. They are not customers, your customers anymore. You are not just the producer anymore. You come together and create something more there. So most of it I get from those platforms. So uh, you, most of your online sales are through other sites. Do you sell much from your own Eli Belinde site? I only sell from my own Eli Belinde site. Um, but you work with a few other companies, right? Ah, yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry. Direct, Taze Direct? Taze Direct, no, no, no. There are just a few ones. I, I, I, I thought that you were asking like, no, I don't work in those platforms. I only work uh, the the e-commerce e sites like Azitrekt, Eskitadunda.com. Uh, These are uh, nice platforms, really, uh, talking about uh, good products. And that's important that um, the, the, these mediators should also take you the same effort like me uh, to behave my product and... Uh, just serve like me to the customer. So these are very good uh, um, partners, I can say. Mm -hmm. Well, for example, what I was thinking, if you want a lot of feedback and the communication for the on people that you sell to online, you have their connection information. So yes, do you, for example, them. contact them? Were you happy with the products? You know, what happened? Can, you know, make sure they're happy and maybe yeah, ask yeah. for feedback? Yes, yes, we're always in connection with them. It's amazing, yeah, we are like friends with them. I don't know how I can continue like this because they're <laughs> getting bigger and bigger every year. Now I have, I think, over 2,000 customers uh, with all the data together with me uh, after three years of sale life, uh, say, say, selling life. Uh, but uh, I'll do my best uh, to make this connection continue because it's very valuable. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I think you mentioned who you were working yeah. with, but uh, I guess your right hand, your left hand, ah, yeah. and, and, and stuff. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, who are they? What do they do? What do they focus on? Okay. Do, do, are you missing anyone? For example, I wish I had somebody taking care of e-commerce. I need mm. somebody for marketing. So yeah. how do you do those things? Until this time, uh, Hojam, uh, things, the strategic uh, issues, uh, responsibility is on me. I mean, all the uh, orders, uh, follow up, uh, the, the, the communication with the customers, uh, okay, the, the other strategic uh, decisions, I spared them, but on a day-to-day on -day basis, the application. 
uh, most of things I do them by myself. Uh, but this is the uh, tip of the mountain. It's okay. I iceberg. Tip of the iceberg. <laughs> yes, raise this in in in in uh, traditional farming. In in farming, actually, uh, there is a huge power, uh, human power, who makes these fresh products out of the soil uh, on a timely basis. Who packs uh, how it is described to them, uh, and timely basis uh, make the people receive their orders on time. So uh, this huge uh, power comes from th those very, very valuable women on the farm. At the very beginning, my idea, my uh, biggest dream was a uh, business model where I can put these ladies, these valuable ladies effort in the heart of the system uh, and uh, get out of and out of the system uh, and added value production. Uh, and Asparagus really helped our lives to make these uh, dreams come true because uh, we made add a value all together with us. So, uh, and these ladies are working uh, starting from day one and now it's the fifth year. It's amazing. They are getting bigger we started with seven women at the beginning. Now they are 15 to 20, depending on the uh, uh, depending on the work we have to do on a daily basis. Uh, and with the addition of Antalya Farm, now we are getting over 50 women on the farm working all together. So it's a, a huge, uh, you know, uh, HR business actually. <laughs> it's a team management and it's the uh, small groups who are responsible from harvest, some are responsible from packaging, some are responsible from um, making them ready for the cargo shipments. Uh, it's the biggest part of the work what we do in the agricultural system. So we have a very nice team for that. And the responsibles are coming out of this team. I don't inject, you know, uh, another person out okay, this is your leader from now on. No, I never did that. Uh, coming from the, you know, from the day one, working with me, who are more, you know, uh, willingly do the, take more responsibility on, they are becoming the uh, leader, leaders of their groups. So this is the system how we organize. Uh, but of course, in the upcoming future, we need to have more, uh, you know, um, uh, friends to help me in my daily businesses as you said like social media management and whatever linked with uh, as we grow uh, gradually uh, but now it's uh, how we work um i had a question i forgot it okay I'll because I'm too long. <laughs> Uh, uh, Ali was saying, uh, yeah, he, he's suggesting more work, more uh, cooperation with the YouTubers. I don't know. As far as I know, the popular ones usually want a lot of money. So you kind of have to find the ones that are doing it on a not quite professional, but maybe more uh, still for the enjoyment. Yeah. And, yeah. I like to praise with a lot. Just yeah. one back to Bas Ferguson. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what I'm going to do, uh, okay, so he, here's another one for, from Bilge, and then for the last 15 minutes, I am going to switch back to Turkish, so we will be able to <laughs> also get some questions in Turkish, so if you're ready. So Bilge is asking about the success factors. What was it that is hel helping you do a good job? Uh, the most visible success factor, I guess, of my job is that perfect timing uh, for my startup. Uh, okay, team is very important. I'm supported with amazing girls uh, on the stage, on the back, back side. But um, I think, yes, perfect timing for us for this business. Uh, not sooner, not later, now. Uh, I think this is the 
most important. I remember my question now. Have any of your workers separated out and started a similar business? Uh, no, but not worker, but one of my uh, helpers in the business. They, from time to time, come to my uh, land to help me for uh, for for um, uh, for for some tractor uh, jobs that we cannot do. But from time to time, we hire such kind of services. Okay. Uh, but now they decided to also grow asperges in their own field, which is very good news, by the way. We, uh, I always support such kind of uh, things. And now they are growing those asperges, bringing the harvest to me, and we are selling together. That's amazing. Another example of co-opetition? Or yes. Actually, that's almost a partnership. <laughs> yes, yes, yes, yes. Okay, so now we're switching back to Türkçe. Yes, okay. sir. <gülüyor> <gülüyor> Actually, İngilizcen gayet iyi aslı. Bence hiç çekinecek şey yok. Bir de yani o ilk 5 e, dakika, 10 dakika uzun süre kullanmadan ev- sonra tabii biraz zor olur. Ama ondan sonra adaptasyon olabiliyor. Server mesela hemen e, Türkçe'ye çevirdi sorusunu. Gönderiyorum <gülüyor> sana. Tamam. Ee, Kadın teşekkürler. girişimciler kurullarına falan almışlardır herhalde seni. Ee, şöyle çok faydasını görüyorum ve itiraf etmenin inanılmaz bunu hem ön plana çıkarak e, severek ön plana çıkarıyorum. E, yani kullanmak doğru tabir değil ama ben zaten bunu e, özümseyerek süreçlerime koydum e, ve bunu her zaman highlight ediyorum. E, etiketlerimde bile public by human oluyor. Yani e, <gülüyor> içeride çalışırken biz kendi traktörümüzde kendimiz kullanıyoruz. Hakikaten gücümüzün e, artık yetmediği noktada yardım alıyoruz. Çünkü böyle bir ayrıştığımızı bir farkındalık yarattığımızı düşünüyorum aslında. Onun için de markamızın adı eli belinde zaten. E, eli belinde böyle şey gibi geliyor. E, esprili bir isim olmuş gibi olmuş gibi geliyor ama, ha, ama aslında geleneksel motiflerimizden bir tane. Ee, ve tamamıyla kadın, doğurganlık, verim, toprak, e, işte uğur, kısmet, neşe bu gibi güzel duygular. Yani bunları sembolize eden bir motif. E, markamızla beraber yaptığımız işin özüyle de birlikte gerçekten kadın kadın hep özgü işi. Ama soracak olursam hani bir kadın gelişimci olarak e, özel bir takım destekler, artı puanlar falan aldın mı hani? Hayır öyle bir şey boyutu oluşmadı. <gülüyor> Ee, ama gerçekten e, birkaç çektiğimiz için bir kadın girişimci olarak e, bir de Oktülü olmamında bir etkisi var sanırım. Oktülü çiftçi olarak e, gerçekten bir şey oldu. Fark, e, fark edildi diye düşünüyorum. Peki öğrencilerimize tavsiyelerin var mı? Yapsınlar mı girişimci? Bir tane şey sorusu vardı. Ee, tekrar geri dönecek olsan. Ee, kurumsala mı gene girersin yoksa doğrudan girişimciliğe mi başlarsın? Hocam galiba geldiğim yolların e, doğru olduğunu her geçen gün biraz daha hissediyorum. Yani önce çat diye atlamazdım seni. Ama bu benim biraz risk averse olmamla da ilgili olabilir. Hani çok risk alıyormuşum gibi görünüyorum ya öyle değil olduğunu İngilizce olarak açıklamaya çalıştım. <gülüyor> ee, aslında hiç de risk almıyorum baktığınızda yani. Küçük küçük alanlarla başlamak, çalışırken, çalışmaya devam ederken bu işe girişmek, olacağından emin olduktan sonra o işi bırakıp sahaya dönmek vesaire. Bir de o iş hayatında öğrendiğim şeyleri çok sıklıkla kullanıyorum o tecrübeleri. E, okulumdaki bilgilerimi de çok kullanıyorum biliyor musunuz? Bana bir kez şey sordu bir, bir röportajda e, şey, sunucu. Hani çiftçi olmak için bu kadar okumaya gerek var mı ya falan dedim. O kadar gerek vardı ki dedim yani bu fikri bulmak, doğru zamanda hayata geçirmek, daha da çiftçilik yapıyoruz diyoruz ama yani day number one o çiftçilik hayatımda ben bu başında bulundum. Yani ilk defa oldum. Çünkü her yönüyle yaptığım için de her yönden gerekiyor. Muhasebesiyle, planlamasıyla pek çok insan çalışıyor onların planlamasıyla ay mühendis bile oldum yani. İşte elinde böyle şeyle bulunan bir şeyleri tamir etmen lazım. Dönemsel bakımlarını yapman lazım. Ya da sen yapmıyorsan bu işleri kim en iyi yaparız? Bunu organize etmen lazım. Dolayısıyla hem okulumun hem e, okuduğum bölümümün, e, çalıştığım kurumların, oradaki pozisyonlarımın 
e, bana kattıklarını ben e, faydalarını çok yaşadığım için geri dönsem yine aynı yolları çok fark takip ederdim ama çok sabırsızlanmazdım. Yine e, çok sabırsız geçti o yıllarım çünkü. E, belki de bunu daha farklı yapardım. Bu risk konusu hakikaten derste de değindiğim şeylerden bir tanesi. Girişimciler için genellikle işte sanki riske bayılan risk lover, risk taker falan diye düşünüyorum. Ama, ama başarılı girişimci aslında şöyle bir defa kumarbaz değildir. Aralarında vardır belki birkaç tane ama iyi girişimciler kumarbaz değildir. Bir defa riski aldığı takdirde yeterli bir ödülü olması gerekiyor. O bir. iki bir de iyi girişimci riski iyi ölçebilen, anlayabilen ve azaltabilen kişiler. Sen mesela orada hakikaten yani ben körle mesela kuş koymaz hadi yapalım deseydim bu büyük bir risk almak olurdu. Ve yani kuş konmaz değil başka bir, şey, bir sürü şey için de aynısını yapabilirdik. Ama sen girip iyi pazar araştırmasıyla hakikaten ne kadar potansiyel talep olabileceğini, ne kadar az üretim olduğunu, yurt dışından bile o kadar işte yol e, ücreti eklenerek gelmesine rağmen şöyle satılabildiğini görünce e, o zaman işte riski anlamış ve aslında kontrol altına almış oluyorsun. Kesinlikle. Ve ş- şeyi de yapmışsın mesela çalışmaya devam ederken deneme kısmı. E, bu aslında her zaman çok tavsiye etmeliyiz. Genellikle çok yavaşlatır çünkü. Normal işle birlikte onu full time yapmak yani bir koyundan iki post çıkarmak zordur. Ama öteki taraftan da gelir öteki taraftan akmaya devam ederken onu alıp mesela diğer işe çok kullananı rastladım. Ee, ve şey yani hakikaten iyi girişimciler zamanlarını da iyi kullanmayı öğreniyorlar. Yani vay be meğerse ne kadar boşmuş zamanım insan sonradan dönüp bazen şey yapabiliyor. Çünkü ya çok yoruldum, çok işim vardı denirken onun üzerine bir, bir o kadar daha iş gelip hala sığıyorsa ha demek ki varmış boş vakitler. Bu genellikle anne babalara çocuktan sonra fark edilen bir şey olur. <gülüyor> Meğerse ne rahatmış hayat filan. <gülüyor> Ama oluyor oluyor hocam. Belki biraz önce sorduğunuz soru hani arkadaşlara var mı bir tavsiye diyeceğim dediğiniz için özlü aslında. Ee, yani bir şeyler için bence e, bir tutku, önce bir hayalle başlıyor yani hayal etmek eminim herkes söylüyordur bunu ama gerçekten yani e, bir şey hayal ettiğin sürece gerçek ve gerçekleşme ihtimali var. Hayaller zaman içerisinde değişe de biliyor yani e, illa ilk başta düşündüğün işte budur benim hayatımın olayı dediğin hayaller hayaller değişe de bilir yol içerisinde ama e, gerçekten e, çok büyük bir motivatör. E, bir de farkındalığınızı arttıran bir konu. Yani e, fırsatları görmenizi sağlayan konu. Dolayısıyla bu hayal etme mevzusu benim de hayatımın çok kalbinde olduğu için söylüyorum. E, bir başka konu tutkulu olmak. Yani her ne yapıyorsanız, hani severek yapmak şu bu ayrı. Bir de bir şey diyelim, tutkulu olun. Yani özellikle bu girişimcilik planları, fikirleri varsa aklınızda. Çünkü bir şey tutkuyla bağlandığında e, asla ondan vazgeçmiyorsun. Yani hiçbir şey yoldan döndüremiyor. Hani bir şey 40 kere söylersen oluyor diyorlar ya yalan 40 kere söylediğin için olmuyor. Sen onu tutkuyla sahip çıktığın için oldurabilmenin bin dereden sola getirsen yolunu buluyorsun. Bence bu çok kıymetli. Ee, bir de meraklı olun diyeceğim galiba son olarak. Ee, çok merak edin ya. Yani o kadar güzel zamanlardasınız zaten. Yani çok fark yok aramızda. Ben de çok gencim. 20 yıl olmuş olabilir miyiz? Ben <gülüyor> itibaren ama. <gülüyor> ee, lütfen çok merak edin. Yani bu çünkü... E, Kurduğunuz network'ü çok genişletiyor, çok fazla bilgi sahibi oluyorsunuz, yeni geliyor kullanıyorsunuz. Ee, Night Design'ı bunu tavsiye ederim genç arkadaşlarıma. Bir de şey hikayesini isteyeceğim senden, orada sonra belki anlatırız demiştin. Ee, bunu nereden bulduğun hikayesi, yani aranıyorsun ne u olabilir mi bu olabilir mi? Kuş konmazla tanışma hikayen de ilginç bildiğim kadarıyla. Evet, Değil mi? evet. Yeniden tanışman. Yeniden tanışmak evet. Nasıl Çünkü olmuştu? Şimdi... Aynen. Ee, işte bu sergide edililik olunca otları zaten iyi biliyoruz, tanıyoruz. Ee, ama kuş konması ben de Türkiye'de hiç yemedim. İşte bu dedim ya hani gıda ile ilgili e, ben ne yapabilirim sorusunun yanıtını aranırken e, kurumsal olarak da bu işi yapan firmada pazarlama müdürü olarak çalışmaya başladım. 
E, ve işte senede iki defa şeye gidiyoruz. New York'a gidiyoruz. Orada fancy food show var. E, bütün böyle dünyanın özellikli gıdalarının bir araya geldiği sunumların yapıldığı bir var. Ben e, yanlış anlamışım bu arada. Ben <gülüyor> o e, şey moda işini yapmaya e, gittiğinde tanıştığını <gülüyor> zannetmiştim. Yok. O zaman algılarım işte o kadar açık değildi. Bu gıda işine girince yani kafada bunlar var dönüyor zaten. E, e, her yerimde müthiş zaten böyle yenilikçi ürünlerle kaplı. Ama orada da bulmadım kuş olmazı bu arada. E, çok başarılı bir fuar geçirdik. Güzel satışlar yaptık falan. Müdürümüzle beraber orada patronla şeye gittik. E, hatta bu Wall Streetçilerin falan takıldığı caddede çok eski e, Smith Wolonski diye bir şey. Steak restoran. Kutlama yemeği yapıyoruz hep beraber. Orada garsonlardan biri geldi işte ne alırsınız? Hani sana iki tane soru soruyor adam. Böyle çok da şey e, yıllardır belli ki orada çalışıyor böyle önünde. Sen e, çok dikkatli konuşuyorsun falan. E, şey dedi yani etin nasıl alırsın? İşte nasıl pişmiş olsun? Bir de yanına ne alırsın? İki tane de seçenek var orada. İşte baked potato mu? E, şey mi? Asparagus mu? Allah Allah işte ben o noktaya kadar asparagus kuş olmaz. Biz onu yiyoruz galiba ama işte bu o muydu falan. E getirin madem bir görelim. Ya o tabakla bir geldi hocam. İlk ilk yani ilk görüşte aşk e, diyebileceğimiz şeyde. Çünkü kuşkolmaz dedim ya gastronomik olarak da çok kıymetli. O tabakları süslemesi görüntü olarak da muazzam bir eşlikçi. E, ben orada önce görüntüye hayran kaldım. Sonra first bite etli onun muhteşem uyumu. Orada lezzet. Ah dedim işte niye biz bu kadar az biliyoruz. Aa, çok fazla üretilmiyor. Oradan araştırmalar. Oradan artık gerisi geldi. Döndükten sonra artık Sultan bir e, kuşkolmaz araştırmacısı oldum. İki yılda sürdü zaten o iş. E, eti de uz- umarım az pişmiş istemiştimdir. Orta hocam. <gülüyor> o, o, orada adam öyle Aa, olmaz falan diye şey yapmıştı. Zaten az pişmiş istedi diye gitti ama asparagustan artık puanı aldım ama. <gülüyor> bir de e, Buse tekrar bir şey soruyor. Çok güzel olur Buse'cim. Çok sevinirim. Ee, şey, pandemi geçsin diyeyim. Çünkü ben bu sene de çok yapmayı istedim. Zaten dediğim üzere işte agroturizmle e, desteklemeyi de çok istiyorum. Siz arkadaşları tarlamızda misafir etmeyi çok istiyorum. E, bunu yapalım. İnşallah bu sene şey olur. İlkbahar aylarında. E, hasat döneminde seve seve hem misafir ederim hem birlikte hasat yaparız. E, paketleriz vesaire. Çok keyifli olur benim için de. Teşekkür ederim Aslı. Çok keyifli Hocam, bir sohbet oldu. Ondan sonra umarım e, izleyicilerimiz de e, hoşlanmıştır. Yani ben tabii burada kendim eğleniyorum. Dolayısıyla bir <gülüyor> iş, iş gibi olmuyor bu sohbetler. E, ama e, işte sınıftakiler de ödev hazırlayacak. Dolayısıyla seyredecekler. Ama açıkçası çok katkısı oluyor. E, ben de yeni şeyler öğreniyorum. Bazı teorik olarak gördüğüm şeyleri, aa tamam işte burada işte o risk alma olsun filan o var. Güzel örnekler de geliyor buralardan. Dolayısıyla onun için de ayrıca teşekkür ederim. Ee, ve e, elimizden gelen desteği de Kuşkonmaz'ın tanınmasına, yayılmasına. Çünkü biz e, aile olarak eşim mesela alıp işte misafirlere meşhur e, konserve koş, Kuşkonmaz kullanarak mesela yaptığımız bir şey vardır. Onu bir salama sarıp ondan sonra peynirli falan Aha. beşamelli bir şey. Umarım ileride ondan sonra senin malzemelerinde de bunları yapıp. Malzeme de yapalım. E, çok değil ama Twitter'da baktım 5500 falan şey varmış. <gülüyor> en azından oradan <gülüyor> yaymaya çalışırız. Tabii çok çok tabii teşekkürler. Çok Hocam çok teşekkür ediyorum. Ben de arkadaşlarımı da çok sevgilerimi, çok başarılar dileklerimi gönderiyorum. E, çok teşekkürler yeniden. Evet arkadaşlar çok teşekkürler size de katılmanız için çok teşekkürler Aslı ve başarıların devamını izlemek dinlemek için hevesle bekliyoruz. Sağ ol görüşmek üzere. Görüşmek üzere.